I was a stupid kid. In fact, I failed grade one because I couldn't read or write. I was in special needs classes until I was in grade six. Every day at school, I had an ax hanging over my head. The threat of being held back and losing another year of struggle. I remember going to school with all the smart girls who understood things easily. They rarely annoyed their teachers because they understood that too. They got all the stars in school and all the good jobs and good girls. <laughs> I didn't. I scraped by and that was a huge achievement for me. Because even though I was just scraping by, I wasn't failing. I wasn't being put back a grade. That axe hung over my head every year till grade six when the school administration finally conceded that I had caught up. For almost all of my time in school, I've had to work hard not to get accolades or awards, but simply to get through it. I still have nightmares about being back in school. It always starts the same way. I'm back. The school is always a dark, ominous labyrinth of a place, and I have this horrible, sinking feeling that I forgot to hand in my last assignments or study for the last test, and I'm about to get my report card to find out if I passed. If there's anyone I can thank for passing, for getting through school, it's my dad. He took the time every day to work with me so I could read and write. Even though I didn't get any stars in school, because I wasn't even good enough to muster pass average. He made a chart out of green construction paper just for me and rewarded me for my far more modest achievements. He broke the things I needed to learn down into little steps I could manage. Don't focus on the risk of failure, Allison. Focus on the next little step forward. Ignore the ax hanging over your head, our head, and focus on your next choice. Read ten new words a day. Spell five. Read a sentence at a time. Read a paragraph at a time. Then a page. For a long time, his were the only stars I earned. My dad never gave up on me. And he wasn't supporting a great talent or a prodigy. He was supporting a kid who struggled to limp past. He was supporting a kid who struggled to limp past the finish line dead last. But he never gave up on me. I got through school. I even managed to qualify for university. I had trouble in university too. My anxiety and depression issues dogged me constantly. Add to that bouts of reoccurring bronchitis and upper respiratory infections. I'd get them and they would last months. One year I was sick for 10 months out of 12. And no doctor ever could explain to me why I was constantly sick. But my father was there, still fighting for me, still supporting me. When I finished university, just barely managing a passing grade point average, and taking way, way, way too long to get there compared to everyone else. He was there to watch me walk. And then a few months after I graduated, I had the worst health crisis of my life. My anxiety got so bad, I was in prison in my own home. I couldn't go to the grocery store. I couldn't walk a block from my home without a panic attack. I wasn't able to eat. I lost a lot of weight in a very short amount of time. I was faced with a life and death decision, get better or die. Even in that moment, all alone, my dad was helping me. Break the problem down, figure out what you need to solve it. I looked for a solution and I found out that I had to rebuild the way I thought about the world. Rehabilitating my mind was an excruciating process. I remember the first therapy session the first therapy sessions with my therapist. Just talking to him on the phone was enough to incite panic attacks that left me terrified and breathless. Once again, I wasn't fighting for accolades or rewards. I was fighting for what most people take for granted, 
the ability to walk a block without fear, to shop without fear, to go on a car trip without fear. I remember thinking many times, I'll never make it, I'll never be free of this illness. But what my father taught me was there with me every step of the way. Don't focus on the risk of failure, Allison. Focus on the next little step forward. Ignore the axe hanging over your head, our head. Focus on your next choice. So I trained myself to think different thoughts. One sentence different, one paragraph different, one page different. A lot of people think I'm smart. I'm not actually smart. My IQ is a bit better than average, but not by much. In fact, I bet most of our audience has a higher IQ than mine. What I do is break down problems to simple steps, just like I broke down the problems of reading and spelling long ago with my dad, or the problem of being able to retrain my thoughts so that the outside world didn't terrify me. If you're thankful that Honey Badger Radio exists, thank my dad. He supported me till I was strong enough to create something like this, to make something like this, and he taught me the lessons I needed to do it. My dad is the reason why Honey Badger Radio exists. And the gift I want to give my father of my dad for that, the gift I want to give my dad for Father's Day, is a world that recognizes how important fathers are for their children, how important he was for me. But since I can't give him that yet, I'll give him a growing community that believes exactly that. This community. I give him the badgers. I don't know, so maybe one day we'll have a world full of badgers. Thank you, Dad. What are you doing? I'm putting my mic away. I'm done. No, you're not. You're not done. You haven't shelled. But I was thinking I'd just upload something for Father's Day. No need for a shell. Oh, you thought that, did you? I bet you thought shelling on Father's Day would make you look bad, didn't you? And that's why you didn't do it. All that talk of building a world for your father where his value as a father is recognized was so much bollocks in the end, huh? Your reputation's more important to you than that. So you want me to shell now? <laughs> okay. If you want to support us, go to www.patreon.com slash honeybadgerradio. Every little bit helps. That wasn't a shell. It was a squeaky side queef. I can smell the tuna from here. Shell! And make it a juicy one! I'll accept nothing less than your all! When I was a kid, my dad and I used to take a drive every Thursday morning from our western compound called Dahran to the city of Al-Khobar to do our weekly shopping. It was an hour-long drive through a stretch of empty desert just before the heat rolled over the land like a blanket, baking away the morning humidity. A good time to talk. On one of those drives... I was eight at the time, I told my dad that I planned to change the world. I said I would make everything work better. The political systems, the infrastructure, the communications, everything. He told me that if I did, that I would likely kill everyone in the process. I remember being furious that he thought I couldn't do it. (laughs) It took me a long time to realize what he was saying. He didn't say, look kid, you barely passed second grade. You think you're going to ever change the world at that rate? I don't think so. Or he could have done what well-meaning parents usually do and mouth an empty platitude about everyone changes the world. Or, of course you'll change the world if you put your heart into it to protect my ego. But he didn't. He never told me that I couldn't do it. He just warned me that it was a, shall we say, perilous idea. That's the funny thing. You have to recognize someone's ability to do something before you can point out the possible negatives of them doing it. It took me a long time to realize that. My father has always believed that I was smart and creative and strong-walled and determined. He always believed those things even when I didn't. He believed in me even when I didn't. He believes these things so much that when an eight-year-old kid told him that she had a plan to change all the political and social systems of the planet, he took her seriously enough to give her some very good advice about being careful not to kill people in the process. So, Dad, I've taken your advice, and here's my plan. See this? 
the square. This is the world and all of the current political and social systems represented in this square. I won't change it. Instead, let's do something like this. Square. This square hasn't changed, but how we see it has. It's become something new, something more without changing anything at all. If a stupid kid who couldn't get past grade one can get this far, then we can get further, much further than where we are now. Nobody left behind, nobody killed. Let's find out who we really are. Let's make a world full of badgers. I'm done. <laughs> Sorry, I have, have a hand caught in my throat. Where was I? You asked me to shill. Shill? What nerve? Shilling on Father's Day? Have you no shame, you vituperative vixen? You fishwife? You would sell sugar spikes with sand to your own sister, wouldn't you, you selfish swindler? You talk of changing the world when you couldn't even pass the first grade. What makes you think a short bus scrubber like yourself could do the least bit of good for anything but the corpse beetles? Why I want to... Ah!